I wanted to have two conversations in this video. Firstly, I wanted to talk about the player, and secondly, I wanted to talk about a certain fan base that always seems to be talking about this guy, maybe more so than the team's fan base that he is currently on. Without further ado, we're talking about the Detroit Red Wings once again. Because, as we have been chronicling over the past few days, the Wings have stunk. They had one win tossed in there after a seven-game losing streak to the Buffalo Sabres two days ago, but yesterday all that goodwill was pretty much shoved down the drain when the Wings lost to the Pittsburgh Penguins in a pretty bad fashion. We've been saying this entire time, man, Lucas Raymond, what a guy. He is looking so good, and he's one of the only guys, unfortunately, that's looking even remotely good. So, I feel bad for him. It's pretty crappy when he looks like maybe one of the only two guys on the team that's actually giving a darn. You could debate that Christian Fisher has also been doing that, too. I mean, the guy's diving to send passes out to Patrick Kane. He's doing pretty all right at that. But... When it comes to some of the guys who are not producing, who are not doing their part, who are not playing up to the standards that are set by their dollar amounts, there's one guy in particular that is still in the lineup. I mean, Dylan Larkin is not in the lineup right now, but when he is in, he's pretty all right. There's one guy who is here, who is healthy, and who's really stunk himself the past few weeks. This is a tweet posted by Prashantier that goes out there and highlights it. Alex Dabrinkit has scored four goals at 5v5 in his last 48 games. And make it now 49 because the tweet was made before the Penguins game. For reference, that's the same number of even strength goals as Oli Mata. And what I wanted to open this video up with before we dive into the entire Ottawa Senators conversation, because hey, believe me, we need to have an Ottawa Senators conversation when it comes to Alex Dabrinkit. This is a guy who, at 5'7", 165, right-handed forward, playing with Kane, 26 years old, making $7.875 million a year till the end of 2027. Dabrinkit, with his 54 points in 68 games played, looks good on paper. You could say that his 65-point pace in 82 games this season looks pretty good on paper, too. His rate of goals, he's on pace for 28 on the year. Sure, it's not the 40-goal season that he has accomplished twice in the past with Chicago, but maybe if Patrick Kane resigns, there's room for that to expand upon itself a little bit more. That looks fine, too. Realistically... Alex Dabrinkit's overall profile, holistically, doesn't really raise any hairs until you look at his recent games. Because Alex Dabrinkit in his last five games has zero points and a minus five, and Dabrinkit in his last ten games has one goal, one assist, and he is a minus eight. Not to mention the stat that Prashantier said, wherein, hey, he's only got four goals at 5v5, in the last 48 games. That's half of a season's worth of play. And I don't need to be some sort of a hockey expert breakdowning whatever player to tell you that that's kind of, uh, yeah, that's kind of unacceptable. For a $7.8 million player, sure, I get it. He was brought on to be a trigger man. He was brought on to be one of these guys that could take over a power play shift, be an immediate one-timer option. And for the most part, that's what he's been doing. He's been good at that. But just not in the last few weeks worth of play where the wings have been pretty bad. I mean, ever since the seven-game losing streak began. Dabrinkit only has one point, and that is one assist. Not great. And sure, I get it. Alex Dabrinkit had a stint at the beginning of the year where he was number one in the NHL in goals. He was one of the top guys in points. He had multi-goal games continuously at a hat trick at the beginning of the year. Take a look at this. Dabrinkit at the beginning of the season with Detroit in the first, what is that, seven games of the season, he had two two-goal games, one three-goal game, and goals in other games, totaling up for nine goals in the first seven games of the year. Austin Matthews who? They didn't even do this with Patrick Kane. This was just with Larkin and Raymond. So for Dabrinkit, he started out the year very hot. He's gotten really cold the past little while here. And we've got a few comments that I wanted to go out there and read in response to this Dabrinkit conversation. Michael Stone replies saying that he has frontrunner tendencies for sure as well. Prashant Iyer says, yeah, for sure. When Dabrinkit is feeling his game, he seems to score in bunches. Joshua goes out there and says that Dabrinkit has been overall disappointing this season, especially since the All-Star game. 
Dabrinkit needs to be off the top line. Less attention and refresh. Raymond and Kane have to be on a line together. They've been lethal. Put Zarnik at center. I don't care. Don't think the center matters because we have a bunch of solid centers. This tweet was also posted onto the R Red Wing subreddit. The top comment says he's been radio silent and it's not been good. He's had his chances and he's whiffed. Another comment says that he has been really good at setting up plays when playing with guys like Larkin. It's an underrated thing I've liked about his game. Also, anyone thinks he would score 40 goals is out of his mind. There's a reason we haven't had anyone score 40 goals since Marian Hossa. We play a more team-oriented game and we always have. Even the cup teams were fairly balanced. Then, this same tweet was posted onto the R Hockey subreddit, so not the R Red Wing subreddit, this is on a more open forum to fans of other teams. Top comment says, Demidcat, Detroit is paying this guy almost $8 million to completely disappear in the middle of a close playoff race. Then there's another reply saying, I mean, it's almost like they're playing every player to completely disappear too. Then there's a question out to Red Wings fans as to whether or not everyone is playing like crap, and the common reply seems to be that, hey, Raymond's been pretty good, so good to see the response there from Red Wings fans sticking up for their Super Swede. But there are a few extra comments that I wanted to go out there and discuss too. Meme Lord Overkill says, hey, hating on Debrinket won't make your team better, buddy. Thank you for beating the Oz yesterday, though. Toxic X behavior. Okay, what in the world does that mean? I see a lot of Ottawa fans who seem to care more about players and teams they hate failing rather than their own team succeeding, and I just don't get it. Who cares what others are doing when your own team is so crap nobody else in the league is thinking about them? And I won't say that that isn't present here. Going back over to the Prashanti Air tweet, one of the top replies says, hey, the Spider-Man meme, it's almost exactly one year to the day that there was a tweet made about Ottawa Senators forward Debrinket last year. Debrinket had four even strength goals in 30 games in 2023. This was literally a year ago. So it's a pattern that we have seen out of Debrinket in disappearing at 5v5 in the latter halves of seasons. Of course, Locked On Senators is a Sens-based podcast, but there are a bunch of other Sens fans going out there and commenting on this too. If you go back over to the Reddit thread, the most downvoted comments here are from Sens fans. One posted the eye emoji, and another one said, oh, Debrinket must be getting lazy on it. And I wanted to use this as an opportunity to address some of the conversations that a lot of these Sens fans seem to be tossing out there, because yes, I see it, you know, like, I'm not the biggest Red Wings fan in the world, they're my third favorite team, but I like the Canucks and the Canadians more. I still see an odd amount of Ottawa fans going out there and just hating on Alex at every opportunity they get. Like, I get it, you know, the guy didn't want to stay, it was kind of publicized that he didn't want to stay, but what exactly is the attachment to Debrinket anyway? Like, I can understand John Tavares, for example. I can understand completely Islanders fans wanting that guy's head cut off the moment he returned into the island because the entire situation there, he screwed you guys over. That makes sense. He was your captain for a long time, first overall pick. The impact that Tavares had in this Islanders fan base was so vast. He built up so much goodwill and then ripped it all away. I understand that. But what the hell did Alex Dabrinkit accomplish in Ottawa? Like, what is there to be fighting for in this fight? The guy played poorly in Ottawa. The guy's now playing poorly in Detroit. Why does that mean so much to Ottawa Senators fans? Like... Do you not realize that in the first place, it didn't even really seem like Debrinket wanted to go to your team in the first place? Like, when he was traded from Chicago to Ottawa, that was already a pretty big deal, and many of us were surprised. Sure, he didn't have the best year. He started out pretty okay, but then fizzled out as the year went on. Same thing's happening here in Detroit, but, like, I don't understand how that's fuel for really lambasting on this guy at every opportunity you get. Every time there's a negative tweet or a negative post or whatever, talking about Debrinket, you'll always see Sens fans quoting it, replying to it. The Prashanti Air tweet that we had talked about, it's got 47 retweets and quote tweets, and a bunch of the quote tweets are from Sens fans. And to be fair, not all of you guys are pretty snarky. In fact, I'd say like the majority of y'all are being pretty, you know, just kind of tongue in cheek with it. Yeah, we'll just bring it up a little bit, but not too many of y'all are like actually annoying and rambunctious about it. So I could at least appreciate that. I'm just fascinated by the amount of conversation brought up by Sans fans in regards to the Brinkin. And I get it, there's tensions between these two fan bases already that probably plays into it too. But if you're a fan of either the Sans or the Red Wings, let me know in the comments all your opinions about the Brinkin, as well as the idea that Sans fans just cannot leave this guy alone. Am I the only one who has noticed this? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishashros 99.
and bye.